Good morning. Good morning and welcome to this Gaming in Spain webinar. My name is Willem Verhoort. In today's webinar, we will highlight several products and services that are specifically tailored to Spain's regulated iGaming market. In addition, the webinar will feature a brief regulatory and legal update provided by Spain's leading gambling law lawyer, Santiago Asensi, including a brief look ahead to the upcoming general elections and their potential impact on future Spanish gambling policy. But before we kick off today's webinar, I would like to thank our strategic partners and sponsors, which you can see listed on the screen. Thank you all for your very generous support. We would not be able to do this without you. Also, as always, our webinars are interactive. If you'd like to submit a question to one of our speakers, you can do so through the Slido app. To use Slido, please scan the QR code on your screen on the left or visit slido.com. Then enter the event code GIS. Finally, select the Q&A tab on the top of your screen to submit your questions or upvote other people's questions. Questions will be addressed and if possible answered during the audience Q&A at the end of this webinar. Our first speaker today is Santiago Asensi, managing partner at Asensi Avogados. Unfortunately, Santiago was unable to join us live here today, but we managed to catch up with him on Friday and recorded the following segment in which Santiago will update us on the latest regulatory and political developments. And once again, welcome Santiago Asensi. Thank you for joining us here, uh, recorded. Uh, how are you this morning? All is good, William. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation and a pleasure to be here. Sorry to be not being live uh, on the event on Wednesday, but thank you very much for inviting me uh, to do it this way, recorded. You're here, that's the most important. Santi, um, were there notable developments in the last few weeks and how do you think these will impact our sector? Well, we had uh, uh, recent uh, regional and local elections at, uh, in Spain and this big change, a big political change has uh, happened. The center right has recovered uh, six of the autonomous regions uh, and many of the municipalities and cities, main cities in Spain that were governed until a few, uh, few weeks ago uh, and during many years by, by the Socialist Party. Uh, right after, just the very day after, the, the president of Spain has convoked uh, general elections uh, for the 23rd of July. Uh, and I believe that the outcome of these new general elections, of these general elections on the 23rd of July, are going to be crucial for the online gaming sector. Uh, there are two possibilities, uh, 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 two clear possibilities. One, uh, the, the, the current government of coalition, the Socialist Party plus separatist parties plus the communists plus the, all the radical left repeat and stay in the government. Uh, or two, uh, the Popular Party, which is center right together with Vox, which is right wing, uh, will take the over. This second possibility after the regional election seems to be the one that is going to happen, of course, anything can happen from here to the 23rd. Uh, and after that, uh, we will see the outcome. Uh, if we take into account uh, how this mandate has been, I will uh, say that it was not good for, for online gambling. With this banner advertising, with this uh, responsible gambling decree, with new things coming, uh, all of them related to protect players, while any policies uh, that could support uh, the, the work of the operators or the policies of, in favor of the operators have not been touched. Uh, that's one that, that, that will be the continuity of this uh, socialist plus the radical left uh, staying on the government. On the other hand, uh, if, uh, if uh, the Popular Party together with, uh, with Fox, this, this, this party from the right side, takes the over, it's a big question mark. Uh, what we know today is that uh, the Popular Party has already said, or Muñez Rijo, the leader of the political party, has already stated that in case that they win the elections, they will remove the Ministry of uh, Consumer Affairs, which this means that uh, 
more than probably in practical terms uh, that uh, the, the the gaming uh, the the, the DGO game will be back will be back or should be back to to the Ministry of uh, Finance and public administrations. That's that's very likely. Uh, that will be the very likely the scenario. After that, uh, again, we don't know. Uh, we, there's no gaming is not in the program of the politicians, but at least I, I guess that we will have some uh, kind of hope and, and and a different approach by the Popular Party and, and, and together with Oaks, if that is the case, uh, different to the one that we have right now. Uh, as I said, I guess these were the darkest days of the uh, for the industry with this with this government. Darkest days. Thank you very much, uh, Santi. Also, from a compliance perspective, what are currently the main challenges for licensed operators in the Spanish market? Well, operators are working right now on implementing the changes from the Royal Decree on Responsible Gambling. Okay. Uh, many of these changes need to be uh, introduced or need to be uh, need to be complete before the 15th of September, and the most complex one have another deadline, which is the, uh, the uh, March uh, 2024. Okay. Um, aside from that, the operators are expecting to have a draft on the data model for ICS uh, reporting. Uh, we need to take into account that this draft will be need, uh, will need to be sent to the trist uh, to to Europe, and uh, that the, of course the political uh, situation or the current political scenario is going to have an impact on this, and probably will have some kind of delay. Same thing for for the players uh, players' says deposit limits uh, that has been uh, announced, and for the first time. The industry is being heard uh, in this uh, new regulatory project from the DGOJ. Uh, again, it's uh, unknown, unknown when this will be approved. Again, a political, uh, the political scenario might change and might vary things uh, from one day to another. Let's see what happens. But uh, initially, a draft of this uh, of this new project should be seen, should see the light. And before the elections happen. Thank you very much, Santi. Thank you very much for joining us today, and I hope to see you soon. It was my pleasure, and I hope that the, the webinar is a success as usual, everything you organize. Thank you very much. Great. With this update out of the way, I would like to introduce our other guest of today. With us here, we have Mark Sabadi, who is iGaming's pay manager at ID verification provider MyTech. Nicolas Lotz, COO at training and compliance provider Chevron Group. We have Mauro de Fabritis and Mario Chamorro, founder of and manager at consultancy firm MDF Partners. And Rasmus Kiergaard, CEO of responsible gaming service provider Mindway AI. Welcome and thank you very much for being here. We are very glad to have you. Starting with the first speaker today here, we have Mark Sabadi. Mark, how are you? Good morning. How is life? Good morning. I'm very well, thank you. How are you, William? Very well, thank you. Mark, starting with you, what products do you offer? So you represent ID verification provider MyTech, as I said, which products do you offer? Well, first, thank you very much, William, for organizing this fantastic webinar. I'm very happy to be here with you. Uh, what do we offer in MyTech? We offer a wide range of identity services and products for gaming operators in Spain, but not only for Spain, as we are, we have worldwide customers. What we do is helping operators providing KYC services like photo ID verification, biometric verification, credit card verification, debt and sanctions at the basis checks, affordability checks like open banking and many other services. In general, we provide all the tools for the Spanish gaming operators for registration, authentication and re-verification of their users. And we support customers like Leo Vegas, Redfred, Tombola, through all the whole identity cycle. And we do that offering an orchestration platform uh, that's, that easily allows the creation and modification of customer journeys in few clicks. So it's a low code, uh, no code integration. 
Thank you, Mark. That was a very helpful description. Bring, going to the second question, which issues specific to the Spanish market does your product address? Well, um, what our customers in Spain say we do very well is balancing two things, fraud prevention with a frictionless user experience. And we do that being compliant with the regulation. Because as you know, Spain is a highly regulated market. Uh, not only the DGOJ, which is very focused on responsible gaming, but also CEPLAC, which is more focused on anti-money laundering. They regulate the market. And the typical registration process for a Spanish operator would be, number one, the SVG, uh, Servicio de Verificación de Jugadores. It's a player verification service. This service from the, this, this service needs to do regulatory checks for the ID number, name, surnames, and date of birth, and they need to check they are accurate, okay? Here, we can help the customers creating forms or extracting the data from identity documents to send information to the SVG. Most operators, they choose the first option because they, want, they don't want to create friction. Secondly, the state ban list. This is a global self-exclusion list is based on the ID number, either the DNA or the NIA. And this is why it's very important to have the information from the SVG well verified. Again, we can help our customers to automate this part with our ID photo verification service or just with a form to minimize the friction, okay? When these two checks are passed, the player gets a limited account, 150 euros to play, lifetime deposit, and no withdrawals, okay? As you know, to get rid of these limits and get a fully operational account, the player needs to pass a simplified KYC process. Where the check, we will have two checks here. Number one, the existence and legitimacy of the document used for registration, so we need to verify the document. Here, we help our customers to automatize this part with our photo ID verification service, which have uh, coverage of more than 180 countries and not only verifies the document by doing a variety of security checks, but also, and this is quite unique, we check the liveness of the, of the document, meaning making sure it's a document from the real world, not a photo or a document or an image, okay? Oh, we do that in a few seconds, okay? And number two, the cross-checking of identity of the player by checking the photo of the document against the face of the player. Here, most customers use our face compare service and our face liveness. Good to know that our technology allows us to do passive liveness, meaning that there is no need to move the face around, you know, to check uh, the is a live person, okay? So we avoid creating extra friction here. With only one frame, we detect if it's in a live face and not a mask, photo, or a screen, or other presentation spoofing attacks. This regarding registration. Regarding withdrawals, we provide a quick and safe authentication withdrawal. We provide credit card validation service, matching the name of the player with the name of the card owner and doing other security checks to validate the credit card. And we also validate bank statements for safer withdrawals, okay? I would say those are the main requirements, requirements specifically for the Spanish market. But what is best is that we provide all these services with a low code, no code of orchestration platform. What does it mean? It means that we, you can create and modify customer journeys depending on your needs. And this is especially interesting in our times where, as Santiago mentioned before, regulation may change. With our platform, our customers can adapt to multiple regulatory frameworks, creating different journeys in few clicks. So there is no need to write code in a changing environment. There was a lot of good information there, Mark. Thank you. So now we know the basic uh, picture. Could you could you go into a little bit more detail? Yeah, sure. Uh, well. As I mentioned, we offer a platform that contains all our services and products. We offer a wide range of products. I already mentioned photo ID verification with OCR, 
face compare and face document liveness for and this is will be for registration i already mentioned also credit card and bank statement validation for withdrawals uh, but there are many more okay we can also do affordability checks some customers want to assess the risk of each player we help them to do that uh, we allow to add also pay slips as attachments we can check with open banking we are connecting with the main banks to perform these affordability checks we can also do authentication checks this is a quick biometric check of face and voice in case there is an event that triggers any indicator of fraud for example an account takeover and the bit, depending on the business rules you set up when this event risk happens we can active a biometric check to prevent a fraudster to withdraw the funds okay this is much safer than passwords it's 10 times safer than passwords okay and i will mention also uh, extra layers such as video id verification database checks peps and sanctions so many companies they like to check that geolocation supporting documents adverse media checks and other services i don't want to go too much into detail all the things we do uh, the good news is that all this can be activated in a few clicks and another good news is that the customer journeys will have always the look and feel of the customer so the final user will never perceive they have left our portal application and finally just mentioning that what we like to to do is helping our customers to maximize the conversion by being compliant so all the bad guys are left out and all the good players come in and play great thank you thank you mark that was very very helpful uh, a lot of information there so please note that if you'd like to submit questions to any of the speakers, Mark or one of the next speakers, you can do so through the Slido app. Scan the QR code on the screen, use the event code GIS, select the Q&A tab and fire away to Mark. For now, let's move on to the next speaker. And thank you, Mark. Welcome, Nicolas. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. I'm, <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. Uh, thanks yes, for thank you. the possibility to join today's webinar. Absolutely. Nicolas, it's good to have you. You offer staff and compliance training. Briefly, what products do you offer specifically? Yes, so um, as the name says, the compliance training. So we are offering uh, staff training in the area of compliance um, via different channels, such as e-learning, blended training, face-to-face, -face, or live webinar. And we offer those trainings via our own LMS, so our clients have the full advantage of an own LMS because we deliver the training uh, through it. Thank you, Nicolas. On the second question here, which issue specific to the Spanish market does your service address? Yeah, so um, we help our clients to fulfill all the requirements in regards to staff training um, in the Spanish regulation. So not only just we deliver the training, but we also deliver help uh, also our clients to um, design a training plan um, to have a proper reporting in place and um, also set up, for example, any refresh, uh, refresher training. So there are various requirements in the law, for example, for the areas of RG, AML, GDPR or information security. And um, for some of the areas, you need to train the whole staff for some just a few. So we help our clients to design the training plan. So not only deliver trainings, but also consult them uh, on um, on an efficient way to to do staff training. Okay, that's quite clear, Nicolas. Going to the second, uh, the third, and last question to you. Could you go to a little bit more detail? You uh, touched upon some yep. interesting uh, points just now. But could you go into a little bit more detail, please? Yeah, sure. So as I said, um, there are two core products the compliance training and also the learn management system which we deliver so we offer compliance training uh, in different areas anti-money laundering data protection responsible gaming and player protection anti-bribery and corruption crisis communication diversity and 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 more um, those trainings we deliver uh, via e-learning live webinar and so on and um, we deliver them via our own learn management system so this allows our clients to do, for example, the user management on their own. Um, and also, for example, if they have own courses, uh, they can uh, upload those courses into our 
learn management system or if they have costs from other providers if they are um in 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 the in the format um we can upload them to our platform and uh, you have advanced reporting functionalities so for example automatic reminders and escalation procedures can can be set up so you have um so the full advantage of an of an own lms okay can we jump to the next slide please so how does it look like um, just as an example here in AML training in Spanish language. So our platform is available in nearly every language uh, on the world. It's based on Moodle. Moodle is uh, the LMS is um, used by, I would say, more than 50% of the universities worldwide. So it's an open source software and um, it's nearly available in every language. So our courses are also available in, 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 in Spanish, English, German, um, in French, um, we recently did some in uh, Romanian language, so whatever you um, require. Okay, can you okay. jump to the next slide, please? So the trainings are, the, the content comes from our compliance experts, um, from Chevron Group or from external experts uh, in our pool of experts. And the courses, and here as an example, in e-learning are designed um, and uh, interactive so it's not just a click-through training um, which is very boring for the staff so we try to do it as interactive as possible i mean still it's compliance but uh, uh yeah we do our best here okay, can we jump to the last slide please yeah so why the compliance training so first we have a, a global approach so we deliver our courses for nearly all relevant markets in in europe such as of course, Spain, but also now Germany, Malta, Denmark, Sweden, um, and, and other markets. Uh, we also have courses for, for Canada, for the US, for the Latin American market, uh, also for the African market. So if we don't have the training uh, or uh, in our pool, we are able to set up um, the compliance training within, I would say, four to six weeks um, for the delivery. Um, we have more than 25 years of experience so the company the chevron consulting company exists in more than 25 years um, we are compliance consultancy so we help our clients to to get license to keep the license we um, offer um, besides the, the compliance trainings also the outsourcing of key functions so we have the knowledge in-house and and that's why we can easily set up um, those those courses content wise um, we have flexible training programs. What does it mean? So, for example, um, as you are a global gaming operator and uh, you offer under several jurisdictions, several uh, licenses um, all over the world, um, often means that the staff needs to do, for example, I don't know, four AML trainings, for complete AML trainings for the several jurisdictions, for Canada, for, for Spain, for Germany, because there are uh, different requirements. We have set up a an, an modular system which allows uh, the staff to do, for example, just um, a basic AML training, when we are talking about anti money laundering now, just a basic AML training, um, which is the same for every jurisdiction, and then just jurisdiction-specific modules. So this reduces the time um, the staff needs to, to do the compliance training, and it focuses on the, on the most important topics. Um, so, uh, also because we have our own authoring tool for if now we are talking about e-learning, we we um, we are also able to do tailor-made courses. So we include the internal policies and procedures of our clients into the training. So, for example, uh, if there is an escalation procedure for player protection cases um, via I don't know Jira, for example. Um, a lot of the, uh, of the operators are using Jira as a ticketing system. And then we will implement an introduction or a video or whatever into the course so that, that the staff, the, the training is really tailor-made and not, not just a generic training which every op operator can, uh, can book. And um, yeah, and then um, as I already said, we have the full LMS functionality which we deliver to our clients. So uh, the um, trainings will be or can be delivered in the CI of 
uh, of the operator. There will be a personalized login with the logo, for example, and the trainings will be um, delivered with the logo and the, and the farb, uh, the, the color type, uh, uh, and so on. We um, allow our uh, clients to create own courses. Um, for example, if they just want to do a policy tracking, so they have a, I don't know, an ISMS policy which everybody uh, needs to needs to uh, go through, and we need to have a proof of that. Then we can also do it via our learn management system. Um, webinars. We have a webinar add-on which can be used, so you can uh, offer your own webinars, or we can offer webinars and organize everything through the LMS. We can have a quiz, for example, after the webinar, and then a certificate will be generated when the um, participant passes the quiz at the end um, of the webinar. Own user management, so you can add new users on your own. You can update the user details uh, on your own, um, depending on um, the license you have chosen. And at the end, there's the tracking and reporting, so we have automatic reminders sent out if someone hasn't uh, completed the training. There are different reports for HR, for the management, which you which you can extract from the system. And the data can also, for example, deliver directly to your HR or CMS tool, for example, Salesforce. So we have an, an existing um, connection with Salesforce and we report the completion dates and certificates directly to the Salesforce system where HR has an, the overview um, of the whole stuff. Great, Nicolas. A lot of information there. Really, really appreciate it. Um, I think there's a lot to take away from our viewers at home here. Our next speakers are Mauro de Fabritis and Mario Chamorro. Uh, Nicolas, we'll see you back at the Q&A, who both represent iGaming Consultants, MDF Partners. We start with you, Mauro. Good morning and thank you for being here. How are you? Good morning, Willem. Really fine, thanks. And thank you for uh, the invitation to this interesting panel. Well, thank you for joining us. Mauro, let's uh, kick off here. What product or service would you like to highlight with us here today? Uh, I would like to introduce uh, our new product launched since uh, July uh, last year that is called Promo Sherlock. That is a, a comprehensive market intelligence tool that helps gaming operator in the end to optimize their uh, promotional strategy. It provides we can say real-time insights into competitors and allow operators to monitor the promotions, benchmarking against the market or relevant uh, competitors of the market arena and optimize and differentiate their uh, promotional strategy. Essentially, uh, our product, Promo Sherlock, is based on three, com uh, three components. Uh, uh, a database that stores more than 20 data points uh, per promotion, promotion types, uh, screenshots, amount, lower relevant limitations, and blah, blah, blah. Daily notification that we send through the platform to the, the operators, and a monthly report um, with the recap of the relevant uh, info inside of the market that we discussed with the, the different operators. Uh, by using this, uh, this tool, operators can save time and money by automating the monitoring process uh, in a structured way, and uh, they can access to the info at all the, uh, the level of, the, of their companies and focus on uh, other important aspects uh, of their uh, business. We can define uh, Promo Sherlock as, a, let me say, a game changer that helps um, operators to optimize their strategy and their uh, uh, position, positioning uh, ahead of the competition. Thank you, Mauro. That was really, really helpful. Let's stay with you for a second. Um, um, which issues, Mauro, specific to the Spanish market does your service address? Yeah, um, essentially, uh, Promo Sherlock starts from uh, some relevant considerations um, in, the, in the Spanish market. First of all, the increasing of the restrictions, as you know, the advertising decree um, include, in, introduce it, introduces several restrictions for TV, radio sponsorship, uh, SAM, uh, display, social marketing, and, and so on. Uh, second consideration is that promotions, typically bonus, 
are not so restricted uh, as other kind of uh, uh, advertising and are the most relevant acquisition and retention tool. As, um, and uh, moreover, as you can see in the chart, promotions investment is the only one included with the affiliation that has not decreased in the last three years period. And it's the, best, the biggest acquisition area where operator can now invest. So it's important, on our opinion, uh, more than what operators, that operators do something, how they do, how they, they promote their directions. And uh, we think Promo Sherlock can help operators in their promotional strategy. Um, I, I think we will uh, give more details and I, I leave to, to Mario go in a little yeah, exactly. bit in, in on this. Thank you. Thank you, Mauro. And for the next question, let's switch to your colleague, Mario Chamorro. Mario, once again, welcome to the webinar. Mario, can we have Mario, please? I think we lost Mario in translation, maybe. Mario, are you still here? I can hear you. Yeah. Hi, Great. good morning. Mario, sorry for the hiccup here. Mario, once again, welcome. What more, apart from what uh, Mauro told us, can you say about Promo Sherlock? Yeah, thank you, Willem. As Mauro said, we have three components in Promo Sherlock. No? We have an online, an online database, we have a daily notification system, and we have a monthly report. What we can see here in the slide is the online database. And this is a very comprehensive and detailed uh, database. We are currently tracking more than 7,000 promotions of the Italian and Spanish markets. And we are tracking a total of 23 data points per promotion. This is what you can see here, all the columns here, it's uh, different uh, KPIs. We track basic, basic information like uh, what is the promotion name, what is the description, the URL, etc. But we also analyze the information and curate the information uh, to normalize everything to make something more useful for the operator. This means, for example, that we try to categorize promotions in different promotion types. We have a total of uh, 11 categories. So you can search, for example, between, you can filter between uh, deposit bonus, standard bonuses, uh, leaderboards, tournaments, free spins, free bets, etc. At the end of the day, all the kinds of promotions uh, are tracked here in, in Promo Sherlock. We do this through a daily analysis of all the operator sites. We go to the promotion site and we look for the new promotions and store them here in, in Promo Sherlock. In Spain, we are tracking a total of 17 operators. Uh, the combined market share of them is more than 85% of the total market share. So I think we can say that we are covering most of the market in, in Spain. This online database is accessible anytime by the operator. They can go here, they can make filters. For example, let's imagine that you are planning a new promotion and you want to get inspiration of what did the market do uh, for the final of the Champions League this year. You can look for this information here in Promo Sherlock or more normal promotions. Uh, if you want, you can look for, for example, for free spins that can be played only at pragmatic play slots in, in Spain, uh, in April, for example. You can do this in, in Promo Sherlock. You can even extract this information to CSV and work directly in Excel if you prefer. So this is the first component. This is the online database. The second one is the daily notifications. This is a daily email that we send to operators with a recap of all the new promos that were activated by operators in the previous 24 hours. And uh, this is a very useful piece of information for operators because we send them all, a list of all the new promos that were activated uh, on the previous day. This is categorized per product and per operator. And this allows to say if the market is moving towards, uh, I don't know, for example, to free spins or they are making more leaderboards now or more cashbacks, etc. This is very useful for, for them. The last component is the monthly report. And this is a very comprehensive and very detailed document. It's around 50 pages long where we make an assessment of the promotional situation in, in Spain. Uh, we have a, a initial section with a high level analysis of, of the global landscape, but then we also make uh, numerous deep dives. Uh, we make an analysis per operator, per promotion category, um, evolution per month, etc. It's a very detailed document that we discuss with operators normally in a 90 minute session per month with them. And this is very useful for them because it's not only as presenting the document, it's also a, an opportunity to make some brainstorming on, on how to optimize the strategy, etc. So just to recap, I would say that these three components uh, allow the operator to, to monitor the market, to benchmark the market, their offer versus the market and versus other operators, and finally to optimize and differentiate their promotional strategy. 
that was a lot of information, but very, very interesting, Mario. Thank you very much. Now let's move on to the final speaker of the webinar today. Welcome, Rasmus. You're here on behalf of Mindway AI. How are you today? Thank you very, very much, Willem. I'm uh, very well, thank you, and thank you for inviting me. Absolute pleasure. Rasmus, please tell us briefly what your service includes. So uh, our solutions uh, is, uh, is uh, based on the fact that we at Mindway AI is a scientific based company, 100% focused on safer gambling solutions. Currently we offer two solutions, Game Scanner and Game Allies. Thank you. Second question over to you, uh, Rasmus, which issue specific to the Spanish market does your product address? Yeah, in general, uh, our products address the regulatory requirement and challenges for operators related to detection of at risk and problem gambling behavior of the players. More specifically, both solutions are related to the fulfillment of the requirements of the upcoming Royal Decree on Responsible Gambling coming into force. 1st of July, uh, the Royal Decree 176 of 14th of March. Among other things, uh, the decree outlines that operators should establish mechanisms or protocols to detect risky behavior, take into, con take into account objective criteria or indicators and other quantitative or qualitative elements, including experience. In particular, also to detect intensive gambling behavior and risky gambling behavior as it is defined in the decree. Also establish an in-content and individualized messaging and have a self-test of gambling behavior available on the website. This is exactly the direct challenges and, and, uh, and, and uh, regulatory requirements our solutions solve. Plus uh, we, uh, with our services and solutions, also support most of the rest of the Royal Decree. Thank you, Rasmus, that was very helpful. Before we move to the next question, just to remind everybody, all attendees of the webinar here, that you can ask questions that we will deal with at the end of this webinar. Point your camera to the QR code on the right side of your screen, or go to slido.com at the hashtag GIS and enter your question. Rasmus, continue to, you mentioned two products. Let's start with the first one. What is Game Scanner and what does it do? Well, Game Scanner is an uh, is a AI based solution uh, uh, developed to detect at risk and problematic gambling behavior. What we have invented is the approach to be able to combine AI uh, machine learning algorithms with human expert psychologist assessments. And what we want to achieve with this is to detect the full picture of the gambling behavior, not only the monetary part, not only the time spent. We want to detect this full picture of the gambling behavior based on, uh, on our, a very comprehensive uh, detection and monitoring of up to 150 data points, um, which, we, which gives us the opportunity to, 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 take, uh, to, to make this full picture on a more individualized and more granulated way based on each individual player's gambling behavior. So uh, based on that, we provide this detection and monitoring both uh, in a real-time model and also uh, in a longer term model. Um, we, uh, we provide the output in a quite sophisticated analysis tool to the operator uh, with, uh, on top of that monitoring and, and alarm setting. So actually we wrap everything up in terms of what the RG staff at the operator needs to do in terms of, of action view uh, and, and taking the proper actions most of the early intervention can be individualized, uh, automated to fulfill the requirement of the Royal Decree. Our software has, uh, to our understanding, as the only one been tested and validated by a testing company, uh, Game Scanner was tested by GLI, and they found that in 87% of all cases, our uh, algorithm will detect the same uh, as a human psychologist would, bearing in mind that humans are not 100% either. Currently, Game Scanner is used by uh, Entain as part of their R program, as well as uh, Flutter Divisions. And uh, in total, we detect more than 7 million active players per month with Game Scanner. That's an impressive number here, Rasmus. Thank you very much. 
Let's look a bit closer into other product, Gamelize. What is Gamelize, Rasmus, and what does it do? Yeah, well, Gamelize is a, is a self-test uh, as a card game based on neuroscience theory. What we have seen in terms of self-testing from the player's perspective is that the typical way of self-testing with questionnaires are unengaging based on sensitive questions, which often are not answered honestly, misinterpreted or misunderstood, which gives a bias in the self-test. And in, in, uh, finally, uh, these questionnaires are not very actionable. Together with Holland Casino, the, the Dutch uh, casino group known for RD Focus, we co-developed uh, GameAlize uh, to cope with these challenges. So in, 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 in detail, GameAlize is a self-test as a card game, as mentioned. We asked the player to flip 80 cards from four pre-shuffle decks with the aim of maximizing the win in this fictive card game. It takes roughly two to three minutes. Uh, we know that because we have had more than 50,000 uh, 50, games played already. Uh, and during the game, we measure the decision-making when gambling. Um, and the reason why we are able to do that is that problematic gambling behavior or problematic gambling can be traced back to a part of the limbic system in the brain called ventromedial prefrontal cortex. After the game has been played, we show the results of the fictive card game to maintain the engagement of the player. We ask the player to do a self-evaluation we report what we have detected. And uh, even more important, we give, based on what we have detected, three specific advice to the player on what to do about what we have uh, detected uh, during the game. And then finally, we can provide uh, an option to get the report mailed over. We see a number of various uh, use cases to fulfill the requirement of self-testing in the Spanish market, both on uh, online and uh, land-based uh, operator sites. Thank you, Rasmus. That's um, very, very interesting. Please stay with us, Rasmus, because we're going to the Q&A part here, but thank you for answering the questions. Uh, now, just a quick reminder to everybody at home, if you'd like to ask a question to one of our speakers, you can do so through the Stylo app, point to the QR code, go to stylo.com, go to the Q&A cap. I think we have some interesting questions here for the panel. Uh, a lot of interesting statements here. So let's go to the first question to uh, the panel here. The first question is Mauro. Apart from Spain, is Promo Sherlock available? And of course, Mario, in other countries? Yeah, I could say Thank that you, right now, Promo Sherlock is... Please, please, Mario. Yes, sorry, I, I think there's a small, a small delay, yeah, sorry. Uh, I would say that Promo Shuttle is available right now, right now in, in Spain and Italy. These are the main two countries we have right now, but we have other countries in the roadmap. Probably in the coming months, we will activate uh, UK and Portugal, that we're seeing a lot of interest. But also Latin America, we are seeing a lot of interest from operators in Latin America. So probably this will be also the, the following ones. Uh, there are other territories like in the Netherlands or Germany that are, are also in the, in the roadmap. That's very clear. Thank you very much. Let's move to the second question. Uh, and I guess that's going to Mark. How fast is the typical ID verification process, Mark? Mark, we can't hear you. Can we look at the sound of Mark? Sorry, sorry, I was I, I was mute. <laughs> sorry for that. Uh, well, it. It depends on, on different factors, uh, but uh, because uh, the, the IDV can integrate different pieces. So it depends if it's only checking the document and comparing with the face, or, or you also want to check lightness, you want to check. But I would say that the typical uh, ID, complete IDV process, uh, a full one, would take less than 10 seconds. That's very quick. Thank you for the quick answer, Mark. Moving to the next question here. Do you offer automated messaging follow-ups related to specific player problems you identify? I guess that is targeting Rasmus here. Yes, Rasmus. Uh, um, well, um, yes, exactly. That is what we aim for. So the the more individualized detection I was uh, mentioning is giving us the opportunity to 
to do uh, in-content, in-context messaging uh, at a more granulated way uh, than the more generic messages we see so far. And we provide functionality to su support that. But even more interesting is it that uh, quite often, uh, because we do this uh, full picture uh, of the gambling behavior, we see signs of something that may evolve to problems later on, even before it's kind of considered a problem. So imagine we were able to, to do earlier messaging and follow-ups um, and potentially nudge the customer to a more sustainable gambling behavior to avoid the, the customer to spin out of control. Maybe as a, even before its intervention, just as a good customer service from a provider to a customer. That is uh, something uh, we strive for and we have functionality to support that. Okay, thank you, Rasmus. I guess we're going to a fourth and last question here. We are running out of time, but a lot of uh, interesting things here. Nicolas, do your courses come with post training reference materials? That was coming from the audience. <clears throat> yes, yes. So um, it, it depends on, on what course. So if, for example, we have phase or a live webinar training, we deliver, um, of course, the training content and, and and also reference materials together um, with the quiz at the end. Um, if we have e-learnings, the courses are available for 365 days, so you can access the course at any time. And um, yes, I mean, we can also deliver content directly from the operator with the training, for example, policies and procedures, as I mentioned uh, in my presentation. Great. So yes, extensively, that's the case. I think we came to the end of the questions now. I would like to thank Rasmus, Nicolas, Mark, Mario and Mauro. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for joining and sharing the information with us today. And uh, well, I hope to see you soon. With this, we come to the end of another Gaming in Spain webinar. In this slide, we are sharing for a moment the contact information of the speakers of today. If you have any questions or doubt to the speakers, um, you can mail them to us. You can mail them directly to the speakers, to Mark, Nicolas, Mauro, Amadio, and uh, Rasmus. So leave this here for a second, or you can make a picture with your camera for future reference. A link to a full recording of today's webinar will be shared in a post-webinar email that we'll be sending out as soon as possible. As always, let's keep in touch. If you have not signed up for newsletters yet or magazines, please do so at www.gamingin.eu. So gamingin.eu. You can easily subscribe, unsubscribe as well. Uh, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.